Hi guys, Steve Rowe here, Extreme Woodworker. Uh, today I'd like to cover a very useful accessory if you have a slider. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is, is if you have a slider is that when you're dealing with small pieces of wood, it just isn't very good with the standard setup uh, to cut either cross cut short pieces or or do uh, several other operations. They're just a difficult clamping operation. One of the examples is this particular slider has a two point contact fence. Two points here. There is a continuous contact which would basically be flip stops. But as an example, the closest, the shortest piece that I can get is 194 and a half millimeters long between here, the stop and the blade. If you want to cross cut anything shorter than that, uh, you basically are dealing with spacer blocks, which, which makes things much more complex. Um, 194 and a half is just shy of 8 inches, so if you're not into the um, metric. So I'd like to show you a, a, a method um, with the Fritz and Franz jig. I mean, there's other YouTube videos on a commercially available a unit which I presume is available in Europe. I have not been able to find it in North America. So I ended up making mine like several others. There's also a link I'll provide in the description that will get you to plans that's on the Festool website. So let me show you the Fritz and Franz jig. Okay, the Fritz and Franz jig is a two-piece setup. Basically you'll have a piece that runner that fits on the T-slot. Put it up against your fence. I'll just lock that in place. So that's the front edge. Now the uh, commercial version I think has some uh, T-slot material that fits in here. I've also outfitted this with a, uh, a T-slot type track with uh, a mechanism for a, um, uh, a measuring tape. And basically you got two pieces here that fit in the groove and you use this to, to clamp it, uh, clamp the workpiece. So I'm going to show two operations. One is to cross cut a small piece of wood and the other is to use this as a clamping to make repeated uh, thin cuts on the off cut side of the blade to, uh, for, for example, for edge banding. Okay, you can see how small a piece I could clamp with this Fritz and Franz jig. It's probably hard to keep it a little bit square here, but I think once I get the stop blocks, it'll work out better. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I've got a piece of scrap here. This is a piece of garbage wood. It's got all kinds of spots in it. But I'm going to use this to demonstrate how to, to rip some thin strips of edge banding. And before I do that, I'm going to pull the rip fence back to clear the blade.
wouldn't you know, my, my piece was short enough to where the edge banding went into the dust collection chute. Okay, so I guess that's a edge banding collector. So anyway, I could continue doing this, making repetitive uh, strips. the short strips from my dust collection hood underneath the saw. Um, these ended up being very consistent thickness about 2.6 millimeters wide and um, with a good quality rip blade it got a nice clean cut very consistent and I was able to do this very safely. So I'm really liking this Fritz and Franz jig. I will uh, leave some uh, links for the plans in the description and following this demonstration of what the Fritz and Franz can do for you uh, there will be uh, uh, some video of how I made this so I hope you enjoyed it and if you got a slider I, I highly recommend the Fritz and Franz jigs so thanks for watching okay so I'm uh, working on the Fritz and Franz jig for the slider and I'm to the point where I have laminated two pieces of half inch Baltic birch plywood. I put an edge on, uh, a hardwood edge on that will go against the blade. The purpose of that is to just not have the blade continually running across the, the glue joints in the ply. Uh, you don't have to do that, that's just something I've decided to do. And I've milled a, uh, a red oak runner that fits in the T-slot slide and you want to get it to the point where you just get no lateral movement side to side but freedom of movement uh, along the track. So my first step is to uh, go ahead and, and cut this flush with the blade then I'm going to decide where to split the, the work piece uh, for the hardware. step is to decide where to cut your piece, uh, cut your Fritz and Franz jig into, into two pieces. Now I've decided to deviate from probably what you'll typically see on this jig and I've, I've purchased some T-tracks with a little strip available for a, um, um, a self-adhesive tape the reason I'm going to do this, I'm, I'm using the T-slot so I can, I can put some adjustable stops with a scale so I can use this as kind of like a parallel fence assembly. Uh, one of the things I'm planning on doing is having a, uh, a handle. You could do a shop made handle here, but my objective is, is to kind of straddle the um, runner in the, in the T-slot. So. I want enough space here and I think I'm going to shoot for well, probably about right here to split the work piece. Okay, so I'll adjust my blade guard such that I can clear. You 
And what I'll do is adjust the fence. I'm going to have the wider side and not cut. So this one will adjust to 175 millimeters. So now my next step will be to mount the dados uh, for the T-slots. I'm going to put that right up against the end such that the scale is closest to the edge. So instead of having a rabbit for the T-slot, it will actually fit in a dado. And I'll do that at the shaper with the adjustable groover. Okay, just as before, on the other, the, the adjustable groover, this is a different size adjustable groover. Uh, the width of dado I need is, is 18.7 millimeters. This particular adjustable groover has a range between 12 and a half to 24. And I need 18.7. I'll start with 12 and a half, so that's five, so that is, this is five millimeter thick spacer, so this makes it 17 and a half, and let's find a one, this makes it 18 and a half, and I need 18.7, so let's see if I can find a 0.2. Yep. I don't have a point two, but I have two point one millimeters, so I'll put those in here. Assemble the groover and apply it to the shape. Okay, just as before, I'd set the adjustable groover up. I put little tick marks to make sure I put the data in the right location. Uh, so that it lines up properly on the saw. So now I'm going to cut them. See how the fit is. Oh, that's that's perfect. Okay, so for the handle, I'm just going to 
comfortably position it across to straddle across the uh, runner for the T-slot. Uh, this particular handle, it, I got this from JW Winco, and it is stamped with the distance between center to center distance and the threaded inserts in this handle. Uh, this will be 110 millimeters. So I'll just I've just marked a position that I like for for the straddle, and then I'll. Uh, Position the holes on 110 millimeter center, and I'm going to use some. Uh, this uses quarter 20 uh, screws, so I'm going to be using uh, a countersunk flathead screw. So now I'm using the smallest Bix bit I have to pre drill holes. I'm, I'll be using these uh, undercut drawer slide screws, these are about 5 eighths of an inch long. Look like about number six. One thing I'd like to point out, I positioned this aluminum slide so it's just oh just shy of the where the blade will pass. I don't particularly want want the aluminum uh, being cut by the blade. Okay, I've got the handle and tracks attached. The next step is, that I'm going to do is use a uh, uh, some, this is 3M stick it, uh, 100 grit paper just on these faces that hold the work pieces. And I'm just going to align it and use a brayer roller to roll that thing tight on there and then use the off cut for the uh, for the other end And then I'm just going to trim the excess off with the uh, X-Acto knife and I will set this back, um, the sandpaper back just about even with this T-Track just to keep the paper, sandpaper away from the blade. So once I get that done, this will be ready to use. I'll, uh, I'll manufacture the, the uh, stop blocks later.